Hello, good morning, church. I believe that uh, we've all uh, had a good night rest before coming to worship. Uh, we have come this morning to gather unto the Lord and not unto any man. I want to welcome you to the Lord's Portion Restorers Church uh, broadcast. This and we want to thank God that it's a good Sunday. It's a good weather. We're thanking God for every one of us for his preservation over our lives. And so you're welcome as we worship together. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Father, we sincerely appreciate you for today and for how you have preserved our lives. Thank you, Lord. We bless your holy name. We worship you, mighty God, for it has pleased you to make us live and not die. Thank you. Thank you, mighty Father, for while we were sleeping, you didn't allow the enemy to come. The Bible says, when men slept, the enemy came. Thank you for not allowing the enemy to come. Thank you for closing the doors against the enemies Thank of our soul. Lord. We bless your name, Jesus. Hallelujah. Be glorified in Jesus' name. Amen. And so as we worship together, as we praise you together, as we worship you together, as we hear your word and share from your scriptures together, bless our lives. Amen. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Can we just praise him? Let's just rejoice. Let's just appreciate God. Lord, you are good and your mercy forever. Amen. Lord, you are good forever. Lord, you are good and your mercy is forever. Hallelujah. Lord, you are good and your mercy is forever. Is there a weakness in your heart? You 
Jesus. Bless the name of the Lord. Just bless his name. Pray and say thank you, Jesus. Thank God for your life. Thank God for your family. Thank God for who he is in your life. Give him praise. Just worship the Lord. Bless his holy name. Let's appreciate him. He's God. He's mighty. He changed it now, but he can change all situations. Bless his holy name. Give the Lord praise. Give the Lord praise. Give the Lord praise. Oh, yes. We Jesus, we thank you. We all are. We all are. We give you praise. We we give you praise. Thank you, Jesus. We. you there is none like you Amen. whom else should we worship no one can we worship thank you for preserving our souls thank you thank you for saving us mm. thank you for another opportunity to worship you together mm. thank you for everywhere your children are gathered today because we know that we are more than two we're more than three and so we are gathered in your name your word says, wherever two or three are gathered in your name, there you will be. We are gathered online in your name. Mm -hmm. And we pray, Father, the power of the Lord in the atmosphere, fill every home in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, precious Father. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name we worship. Amen. I want you to pray these two prayers this morning. Lift up your voice, say, Father. Father. Open my understanding this morning. This Come on, say, Father, Father. Open my understanding this morning understanding that this I may comprehend mysteries. Let, Let us pray in Jesus' name. Jesus. Father, open our understanding this morning. Understanding this we want morning. to comprehend the mystery of the kingdom. Of the kingdom. In the name in the of name Jesus. Jesus. We want to comprehend. Open our understanding. May comprehend the mystery of the kingdom in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Can you pray with me? Say, Father, Father let the blessings of your kingdom reach me now. Go ahead and talk to God. Pray that prayer sincerely. The Lord is about to bless. Let the blessing of the kingdom reach me, O God. Make me enjoy, make me a beneficiary of the blessings of the kingdom of God. In the name of Jesus, count me as a beneficiary of the blessings of the kingdom. In Jesus' name we pray. From today, may the Lord count you as a beneficiary of God's kingdom blessing in Jesus' name. Amen. You will not lack blessing. Amen. You will not lack happiness. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. As we share from your word today, we pray, Lord, you minister to us. Amen. In accent that is very clear Amen. now. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. All right, today we 
are sharing and we're starting the series. We shall be sharing it for about three Sundays. Uh, next Sunday is Judah Sunday, so we shall we are going to skip next Sunday, but we will commence from Upper Sunday, the second Sunday of August. We are in August already, right? And so we shall commence the series this morning that we call Be Attitude. Be Attitude. Matthew chapter 5. Matthew chapter 5. Reading from Matthew chapter 5, from 1 to 12. Matthew 5, from 1 to 12. I read in the name of Jesus. <clears throat> Jesus saw the crowd and went up to a went up a hill where he sat down. His disciples gathered around him and he began to teach them. Happy are those who know they are spiritually poor. The kingdom of heaven belongs to them. Happy are those who mourn, God will comfort them. Happy are those who are humble, they will receive what God has promised. Happy are those whose greatest desire is to do what God requests. God will satisfy them fully. Verse 7. Happy are those who are merciful to others. God will be merciful to them. Happy are the pure in heart. Mm -hmm. They will see God. Mm -hmm. Verse 9. Happy are those who work for peace. God will call them his children. Verse 10. Happy are those who are persecuted because they do what God requests. The kingdom of heaven belongs to them. Happy are you when people insult you and persecute you and tell all kinds of evil lies against you because you are my followers. Verse 12, where we are going to stop today, be happy and glad. For a great reward is kept for you in heaven. This is how the prophets who lived before you were persecuted. May the Lord bless the reading of his word in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Now, when Jesus looked at the crowd, he saw this multitude of people and he saw a need. He saw the need to gather this crowd together with his disciples. And he saw the need to teach them what the reward looks like. If they would leave the kingdom of the world and join the kingdom of God. He saw the need. And reason he started with what is called beatitude. He had been preaching in synagogue before now, but publicly, when he came to the public place and he saw the crowd, he saw a very pertinent need to call the disciples together, sit them together with this crowd and to teach them about the kingdom. He saw the need to to help them translate from the kingdom of the world how, how it used to be and how it used to run. And he wanted to introduce them into the new kingdom that he had brought to introduce to them. He wanted to bring, an, a, 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 bring up an idea in their spirit by massaging their interest with the beatitude now it was so that the jews the jewish crowd they had some forms of attitudes they had some forms of attributes that they were living with in the world before now but jesus was to teach them what they should expect coming into god's kingdom 
because Jesus, uh, the, because Jesus could sense that they were coming to him, and so he, he actually had to sit them down with his disciples, and he taught them that if you're going to come into this kingdom, the kingdom of our God, these are the things that are essential. And he didn't just tell them to come into the kingdom. He told them the blessings. And that is why Jesus started with the blessings that we call beatitude. Now the word beatitude is not an English word. Beatitude is not an English word. It is a Latin word. It is a Latin word, beatos. Beatos or beatitudo. Those are the two Latin words, right? And the meaning is just as simple as the word blessed are you. The meaning means blessedness. Blessed are you or happy are you. That's the meaning of beatitude. And so this beatitude regularly comes with two clauses. This beatitude comes with two clauses. Number one, the one pronouncing the ones pronouncing blessedness upon a certain type of people. Now, in Luke's record, it is different record in Luke with Matthew. There are two different records. Now, this beatitude comes in two clauses. The first clause was pronouncing blessing on the people. Blessed are thou. Blessed are you. The second clause in the beatitude is the clause for. So, Jesus was trying to establish you are going to be blessed for these reasons. He was trying to introduce to them the blessedness that is in the kingdom of God. However, if you are going to be blessed in this kingdom I've come to present to you, you are going to be blessed for this purpose. And so, those are the two clauses that are very key. And so, every, every blessing, either in the kingdom of the world or in the kingdom of God, is for a purpose and so he introduced the blessings of the kingdom to them and with the word beatitude that's why in, in latin they call that that word uh, uh uh translated into english as blessing beatitude blessing and that's why you see in the in the english bible is it blessed are you blessed are you or some translation will say happy are you right so in the kingdom of God, there is blessedness or there are blessings. And when you come into this kingdom, Jesus was trying to say that you're coming into this kingdom for once you are blessed, you are blessed for these purposes. So I want to make us know very quickly that as they came to Jesus, and the ministry of Jesus was starting, Jesus wanted them to know these two things. The first, that it is going to be a huge blessing if they leave the common kingdom of the world and come to the kingdom of God. It's going to be a huge blessing. Two things were on Jesus' mind. If you leave that kingdom, you come into God's kingdom, there are huge blessings for you. You have reward. He painted the reward of the kingdom for them with the word blessed, beatitude. Right? We are going somewhere. And so he was practically welcoming them with the word blessed are you. He was welcoming them. In fact, some scholars believe that blessed are you was a congratulatory exclamation. That's what out some scholars see the word blessed are you. Every one of us will see blessed are you. Some other translations say happy are you. Some scholars see it as a congratulatory word. That ah, congratulations, you have come into God's kingdom. Congratulations, there is blessing in this kingdom. 
Or there are blessings in this kingdom. Blessing of different category. And that's why he, he, he identified different category of blessings. Blessed are you when you are like this and you come into the kingdom, you will be like this. Right? So, he made it categorical by letting them know that there is blessing in the kingdom. And secondly, Jesus wanted them to know the reason for the blessing. The reason for the blessing. Reason he first used the word beatitude, blessed are you, he first used it to congratulate them. So that they can know that there are reasons for this blessing. Right? So he said, blessed are you for... That is the reason for the blessings that he first used as a congratulatory message bringing them into the kingdom or introducing the kingdom to them so i'm using this time to just introduce the beatitude the essence of the beatitude before we now begin to look at these things one by one and in all of these blessings i mean there are about eight well uh Look, the book of Luke categorized it differently, and the book of Matthew categorized it differently. It's funny, but that's how they categorized them. Now, we will look at it one by one. The first he said, he said, Blessed are you, those of you that are poor in spirit. In fact, I like the way that Matthew and Luke presented it. They presented it for us to see it in two ways. And we are going to be looking at it in those two ways today. Just that first one. Right? Matthew chapter 5, verse 3. Can we read verse 3 again? Matthew Happy 5. are those who know they are spiritually poor. Happy are those who know they are spiritually poor. The kingdom of heaven belongs to them. All right. For the kingdom of heaven belongs to them. Blessed are you that you are spiritually poor. Your spiritual poverty is there. We are introducing a kingdom to you. And in this kingdom, you will be able to know and enjoy some things different from this poverty all right we want to look at it in details now since blessing cut across everybody every type of people blessing that's why it started with blessed are you blessed are you blessed are you that's the beatitude blessed are you now let's look at it in one by one in details the poor in spirit the poor in spirit and he's saying blessed are you you know the way we have been interpreting it before now is that ah well thank god i am poor in spirit i am blessed more than those that are not poor so we want to look at this because matthew presented it in different way luke presented it in different way but we're going to consider the two together we're going to interwing the two together in this teaching now the poor in spirit jesus is not trying to suggest or jesus is not trying or he wasn't trying to justify that having the attitude or the disposition of being spiritually poor was good for god's kingdom no it was not a suggested that when you are poor in spirit Ah, uh, you are blessed. In the kingdom of God, you are blessed. No, that's not the suggestion. If that is how you have been looking at it before, no, we want to have a paradigm shift. Right? And that's the essence for this series. Right? I mean, before now, all of us have been thinking, oh, blessed are you, you thou, thou that is spiritually poor. Ah, you are blessed. And people enjoy being spiritually poor. And they will feel, well, well, Jesus has declared that there is blessing in it. You know, but no, that's not what Jesus, you know, is trying to say in this text. 
And so we want to analyze what this text is actually bringing to us. Jesus is not trying to justify poverty. Jesus is not trying to say, when you come to the kingdom of God, uh, it's good, remain poor. No! He was trying to reorientate and change their ideology. Because these people, they were already poor. Right? And so, the, 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 the blessings of the kingdom transcends the poverty of this world. So, it didn't mean that when you come into the kingdom of God, you will remain poor. No, that's not what Jesus was trying to say. The reason he introduced the, the, the message to them or the teaching to them by saying, blessed are you. Blessed are you. Even if you have been poor, as you are called, blessed are you. Amen. Right? Because the kingdom of God is not for poor people as our God is not poor. Although poor people can come, Jesus is trying to introduce something to them that once you come as poor as you are, when you come into the kingdom and you are translated into this kingdom, blessed you will become. I see someone that is translated into the kingdom of God today. The blessings of your life will become blossoming in Jesus' name. Amen. So, now, let's begin to look at it very, very, you know, I mean, systematically. They have been poor. And the Bible says, I like the Matthew presents it. Hmm? Matthew says, spiritually poor. But if you go to Luke chapter 6, Luke only said, happy are you poor. Happy are you poor. But Matthew, Matthew came with a, a different dimension and say, happy are you that you are spiritually poor. Both have meaning. Now, if you see the book of Luke, we will still refer to it as time, I mean, as we proceed. If you see Luke chapter 6, Luke chapter 6, Luke 6 verse 20 and verse 24, you will understand what we are saying by these differences. But both, we want to intertwine it together so that you will see the scripture as one. And not, you know, even some commentators were trying to, you know, separate this look and but we want to fuse them together by by god's inspiration now luke chapter 6 verse 20 and verse 24 jesus looked at his disciples and mm. said happy are you poor mm -hmm. the kingdom of god is yours you see that's the record of luke yeah happy are you poor the kingdom of god is yours now can i ask a rhetoric question does that mean the kingdom of our God is meant for the poor? No. That's not what Jesus is saying. And some people have misconstrued this teaching. Some people have misinterpreted it and they believe there are some things we want to, you know, God is changing, he's using this series to change our mentality. Now, they are being poor in spirit. Let's go to Matthew first. Right? They are being poor in spirit. Are two sides right? They are being poor at two sides. I want us to consider that of um Luke first. Mm -hmm. The Luke first. Now look at verse 24. But how terrible for you mm -hmm. who are rich now. Okay, you have had your easy life. How terrible for you. So you can see Luke presenting poverty and the rich. Right? The poor and the rich. He talked about the poor. He said, you that you are poor, blessed are you in this kingdom. You that you are rich, ah, it's terrible for you. So, so does that mean that when people are blessed as Christians, does that mean they will live terrible life here? And no, 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 no. That's not it. Now, what we want to fuse together this morning in these two texts, Matthew and Luke's account of this beatitude, is now Jesus is trying to present the attitude we should begin to live with our spirit. And two ways. We want to look at 
they that were materially in poverty, like Luke presented it. Right? We want to look at happy are you, blessed are you, those of you that are that have material poverty. You know, Matthew said, blessed are you that are spiritually poor. But Luke said, blessed are you that you are poor. And he now said, the rich are, ah, oh, it will be terrible for you. Ah, ah. Does that mean once I have blessings on earth as a Christian, does that mean that life will be terrible for me? No, 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 no. No, 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 no. So it means that poverty in the kingdom of God, the way the kingdom of God views poverty, yes, in this crowd that we have, most of most of these the people in this crowd, they were they were materially poor. They were just like Luke presented it with you know uh, differentiated poor and rich, picturing the poor and the rich. Right, so the people in this crowd were actually materially poor. Does that mean the kingdom of God gives room that we should be materially poor? No, and that's what Jesus wanted to change. Luke shows us the two categories of people in the Jewish kingdom the rich and the poor, the rich that were materially rich, and those that were materially poor. So, what are some signs of poverty attitude that Jesus now wanted to change in them? Because in this crowd, these people were materially poor. And Jesus said, "When well, as you are coming to the kingdom of God, blessed are you. Now, he wanted to change their attitude and their, their disposition of poverty. Blessed are you. That is, in the kingdom of God, it is not known with poverty. So, welcome into this kingdom, the kingdom that will change your poverty attitude Hallelujah. or your poverty mentality. That is what Jesus was trying to do. So, what are some signs of poverty attitude that some of us carry into the kingdom? Because some people like, 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 uh, like uh, Matthew and, and uh, some people are just materially poor. So, what are the attitudes? That shows that you carry poverty mentality, poverty attitude that must be, you know, that must be done. That doesn't befit the kingdom of God. And Jesus was trying to say, tell in this place, blessed are you. Even if you are poor materially, as you are coming in, blessed are you. What are these mentalities? What are some signs of poverty attitude that must change? As you come into the, the kingdom of God, number one attitude, when you complain that you are helpless, is a poverty attitude, poverty mentality. And that's why you will see most of the crowd in the days of Jesus, they were always complaining of helplessness. Jesus went to the pool. He met a man. They said, do you want to be here? He said, there is nobody to help me. Poverty mentality. And Jesus was trying to change it that in this kingdom, blessed are the people that comes in. But as you are poor, with this poverty that is that are stricken you, come into the kingdom. Come into the kingdom. When you come into this kingdom, this attitude of poverty has got to change. And so the first attitude of poverty was, and the, 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 was, in fact, we still see it in Christians today. The attitude of, of complaining that you have no helper. Right? Most of these people in Jewish days, they complain these things. That there is no helper. Right? And that's why you will see crowd of people having no food to eat. Crowd of people. 5,000, 3,000. Without food to eat. There was poverty in them. Poverty in them. Material poverty. And that's why Luke, you know Luke, I mean Luke was educated. So the way Luke presented it, he presented it as, you know, the rich, ah, kushel, well done, you are oppressing the poor, right? You, terrible shall it be for you. <laughs> are you poor? Uh, don't worry. God is saying, Jesus is saying, come. Yes, blessed are you. And so, 
the poverty mentality and attitude that must change is for you to be thinking that there is no helper no help for you and that was what these people were carrying along so jesus gathered them to tell them help has come help has come helper has come stop living with this life of poverty attitude poverty mentality blessed are you Amen. that's the that's the attitude that's the that's the christ kingdom attitude blessed are you begin to live with that attitude and with that mentality and with that with that altitude in you blessed are you Amen. blessed are you in john chapter 14 verse 16 jesus says and i will pray to the father and he will give you another helper. Oh, you wonder why Jesus was saying all of this? Because Jesus knew that they were living life of the attitude of, I don't have someone to help me. And that's why we are poor. Nobody to help me. Many Christians still do that today. They are looking for one, one, uh, uh, and the whole of the prayer, lost and helper. Can't you also be an helper to somebody? In the kingdom of God, this attitude must change. The attitude of there is no one to help me. This attitude must change. Blessed are those that come into the kingdom. The attitude must be, there is help. And Jesus, Jesus told them, you know, Jesus told them, pray to the Father. And he will give you another helper like I am going. And so Jesus didn't even leave us helpless. So there should be no one in the Christian dawn today that will be living with the attitude of poverty. I don't have anybody to help me. Uh, you, know, so, you know, I realize that the, we, people, people come to church today because they are looking for business helpers. <laughs> and once they don't see it, then they run away from church. This attitude must change. That is the Holy Spirit. If you depend so much, looking for people that can help you, and that was the, that was the, the crowd. They, they always say, no, no one to help me. Jesus will now help you. Okay, oh yeah, carry, carry your cross. Oh yeah, just carry the car and, and walk. Right? So that attitude has got to change. Another attitude of poverty, poverty attitude that should change is when you see yourself as destitute and devoid. Is a, is, a, is a poverty attitude in the church. It's a poverty attitude in the kingdom of God. That should change as you come into the kingdom. It should change as you are in the kingdom now. That attitude of saying that you are destitute. How can you be destitute? When Jesus even said, a little one that Jesus told them, in my father's house are mansions. You cannot be destitute. Lord, you will just see them, plenty of them in the desert. Destitute. You will imagine what, what, what 5,000 people, what crowd could be doing. Destitute. And Jesus was introducing the kingdom to them. Like he's introducing to you today. He's saying, come, as poor as you are. Over that poverty, just, just come with it. But when you get into the kingdom, you are blessed. Amen. There will be no life of voidness. You know, they were void. Some of them, most of them were destitute. They had no house to stay. Oh, reason Jesus started to teach them, in my father's house are even many mansions. Come into this kingdom. If you come into this kingdom, you will come into the kingdom of mansion. You will no more live a life of destitute. Amen. And that's why you will see them destitute, scattered all around. Eh? And they will now be pointing fingers to the rich, the rich, the, 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 the wealthy Jews. And that was what Paul, uh, well, sorry, what Luke was trying to say in verse 24. That all of you that you are rich, uh, terrible, terrible shall be what will come upon you. No, 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 no. It's not to say that the kingdom of God is only for poor people. No. When you come into the kingdom, the kingdom of God has reserved mansion for you. You will not be a destitute. The kingdom of God has help and helper for you. The helper is the Holy Spirit. Yes. You will not be helpless. Come. Now that you are poor, come. Material poverty, come. The kingdom is blessed. And that's what Jesus was saying. Those misinterpret Jesus. 
another mentality and attitude we live with like those people is when you when you merely depend on other people for livelihood and not god these people in those days they used to depend on on you know that that was why we had we even had lazarus he was a beggar even lazarus was a beggar so in those days they used to see those that are rich as if they are they are they are they are, they are cast out they are like see the no I said the kingdom of God is only meant for the poor. No, that's not what Jesus is saying. Right? Reason he taught us to pray. Give us this day our daily bread. That's right. Livelihood. Your livelihood doesn't depend on anybody. Amen. When you come to the kingdom of God, Jesus is saying that, you know, it is that attitude of of looking at your livelihood depending on people it's changing come blessed shall you be because in the kingdom there shall be daily bread Hallelujah. little wonder jesus provided bread for them and he now taught them okay this is how you should pray right give us this day our daily bread there is daily bread in the kingdom the kingdom of god is not meant for poor people it is meant that when poor people comes into his kingdom, there will be daily bread for them. Amen. I see daily bread at your table. Amen. In the name of Jesus Amen. Christ. From today, every one of you with the attitude of poverty, it will change in Jesus' name. Amen. You will see daily bread on your table. Amen. You will trust God only. Amen. For your livelihood shall be supplied by God only. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. So the kingdom of God is not for lazy people. It's not for lazy people who love to be spoon fed. I mean, can you imagine crowd? They just want to be spoon fed. And that's why we, you see, most of the people that, that go to church today are people that want to be spoon fed. If nobody look for a job for them in church, ah, that church is in trouble. That church is in trouble. They don't depend on God for their livelihood. They depend on human beings for their livelihood. Right? That attitude has got to change. Yes. You have to begin. The, the, the blessedness of the kingdom is what Jesus invited you for. He said, you are poor today. Okay, come, blessed are you. Blessed shall you be. Amen. As you are poor in, in, in material things, blessed shall you be Amen. in the Lord. Come to the kingdom. Tell someone beside you, come to the kingdom. Come to the kingdom. And so Jesus welcomed them into the kingdom so that they would occupy. Occupy. And not just be depending on, on, on people becoming lazy. 5,000 people in the desert doing what? Were they cultivating? They were not cultivating anything. They were just waiting for one rich man that will come and throw bread and scatter bread. And because they knew Jesus will always make miracle of bread, so they were always coming. They were always coming to Jesus, and Jesus said, oh, "Sit, sit down, sit down. Let me teach you. The kingdom of God is blessed, and it is for blessed people. Though as you are coming as poor, this poverty attitude must change. Another poverty attitude in the kingdom of God." that is not allowed is when you put yourself at the advantage and exploit of the rich when you put yourself in those days the rich used to oppress they were oppressors in those days and so they used to put themselves at the expense of the rich at the advantage of the rich and one will wonder one of jesus's disciples too you know judas he put himself at the edge, at, at the at the at the exploit of the rich. He, co he even collected money from the rich Jews to betray his master. Can you imagine? He saw he saw a woman pouring expensive oil on Jesus's feet. He exclaimed, "Ah, this is waste, poverty mentality." Yes. It will make them see that some things are too expensive to do for God. Poverty. Mentality. Poverty mentality is an attitude that must change in the church. Hallelujah. It's an attitude that Christians must not live with anymore. When you put yourself at the advantage and exploit of the rich, 
We are also in a society like that where the rich exploit the poor. That's right. No Christian is to have such lazy attitude. No Christian is to have such lazy attitude that will make you to be prone to exploit. You have to work for what you want. Work for what you want. When you just litter around, litter around looking for uh, one, one rich man that will scatter bread. No, no, no. Stop littering around. Work. There is blessing in this kingdom. Work. When you work, he says, I will bless the works of your hands. Hallelujah. Work. The kingdom of God is not, is not, is not as you used to think. Ah, blessed are the poor. Ah, let me remain poor. Ah, the Bible says blessed are the poor. No, that's not what Jesus was trying to say. He was trying to change their, their attitude and their, their, their mentality of, of poverty. Poverty. Another, another attitude of poverty that must change and in the kingdom of God is when you allow the world to see the kingdom of God as for wretched people hmm. only. When you allow the world to see the kingdom of God as it is for wretched people only, it is a mentality and attitude of poverty hmm. that Luke was talking about. It is mighty that there are, okay, those of you that are four in spirit, we will get there. We will touch that. And we will see what he's trying to say. But let's treat that of Luke now. You see, those of you that you are poor, and he now went to verse 24. He now said, all of you that you are rich, ah, a terrible shall it be. No, no. It's not as if you cannot be Christian and be rich. That's right. The kingdom of God is blessed. Hallelujah. I will be blessed. I will be In blessed. In fact, I am blessed. 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 In the name of Jesus. Amen. Because I'm in this kingdom, I am blessed. Yes, I am because blessed. you are in this kingdom, you are blessed. That mentality Jesus. of poverty is changing today in Jesus' Amen. name. Blessed are you, yes. Paul. Hallelujah. Blessed are you, Paul. Blessed are you, Paul. Another mentality of poverty is, like I mentioned, is when you allow the world to see the kingdom of God as for the wretched people. Hmm. You will notice Jesus welcomed this crowd into the kingdom with a strategic clause. Beatitude. Which means blessed. Are you? That's strategic. You, Jesus was very strategic in this teaching, and that's why he started with "Blessed are you," because he didn't want them to see the kingdom of God as for the wretched. He says, "In this kingdom, he started blessed. Are you? Are you? Somebody say, blessed are you.' Blessed are you." Can you show somebody just stretch forth your hands towards your, 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 your screen and say, Blessed are you, Hemesi. Blessed are you in the name of Jesus. Blessed are you. Blessed are you. Blessed is your home. In the name of Jesus. No wretchedness in your family anymore. Because you are in this kingdom. Blessed are you in Jesus' name. Amen. When you allow, you know, the world to see you know, the kingdom of God as if it's for wretched people. And that's why some people, some people don't want to be Christians. No, the kingdom of God is not for wretched people. That's why I said blessed. Blessed is the kingdom. When you, it must be in the kingdom. Sorry, it mustn't be in the kingdom. The attitude of, uh, see, you know, I remember there was a time, you know, that Baba Kumui was trying to correct. I listened to that. He was trying to correct. You know, a, 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 a mentality of the people. And you know, I was now preaching and said, I, 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 he said, I have heard several times how some people call some type of cloth, how some people call some type of cloth uh, 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 that, 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 uh, that is it's a deeper life cloth. Ba ba Baba said it clear. I heard it clear. Baba said, I, even my suit, I use designers. You see, but some people have, have taken the mentality that once you are a Christian, you must be wretched. You must look wretched. If you look good, ah, you are in trouble. I command the spirit, that attitude of poverty, that spirit of poverty mentality in your life. I command it to leave you in Jesus' name. Amen. The kingdom is not meant for the poor. It's not meant for the wretched. 
is meant for the blessed. That's why Jesus strategically introduced his teaching by saying, Blessed Amen. are you. And so this attitude must change. Jesus is welcoming you too into a blessed kingdom because the kingdom the kingdom of God is it's not a matter of poverty. It's not, it's not a place of poverty. Never think that some things are too big for God to do. Mm. That's an attitude that must change. Some people have that disposition, Christian attitude, Christian disposition that uh, uh, there, uh, there are some things Jesus cannot do. At what age? Can he buy a car for me? Mm. At what age? Uh, at what age? Me that I have lost my job. Can he build us for me? Uh, leave that. No, 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 no. The kingdom of God is beyond that. I see people get employed at old age, at retirement age. Uh-huh. There is a testimony. If that person will be willing to share the testimony next week, do that. At the age you will think somebody should have retired and they are still employing. State government is still employed. Ah, no, 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 no. The kingdom of God is far beyond that. That mentality and that attitude of, of looking at it as if it's, 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 it's for wretched people. No, it's not for wretched people. It's not for wretched people. And now let's look at, before we just close, the aspect of Matthew chapter, the aspect of Matthew, Matthew 5, 3. Matthew 5, 3 say, Happy are those who know they are spiritually in our put that word spiritually poor so that tells you that there are two types of poverty material poverty and spiritual poverty and that was how it was for the crowd they were they were materially poor and they were spiritually poor you will agree with me that the holy spirit had not come in their days the spirit of the master the spirit of christ had not come in their days and so don't forget put that in your mind before now the spirit of god before this experience of jesus's teaching the spirit of god had not been given to them and so they were actually poor in spiritual things like matthew presented it they were actually poor in spiritual things in Matthew's account, you will see Matthew talking about spiritual poverty, unlike it was in Luke, just talking about the material poverty, right? So, both your attitude towards spiritual uh, poverty and material poverty has got to change when you come and as you come into this kingdom, your attitude has got to change. Right? Your attitude has to change. The attitude of poverty. We have talked about the, the, the material one. But spiritual poverty that Matthew talked about. Your attitude about spiritual poverty has got to change. These people were actually deficient in spiritual things. They were deficient. They were poor in spirit. Why? Because the Holy Spirit. Let me tell you something. You see... The spirit of man, that's why you show that that spirit is small letters S. That tells you about their spirit. Jesus was talking about their spirit. The poverty of the spirit. In fact, some I saw some, some commentators trying to trying to you know commentate that uh, being poor in the spirit uh, is a sign of humility. Uh, come of that. Come of that. I don't agree with that. Because we have some of our fathers in the faith that carries the presence of the Spirit of God. Right? So let alone somebody that is now poor in the Spirit. You now say, compare their humility to get. No, it's not uncomparable. Right? It's uncomparable. So, so Jesus came with the message of hope for their spiritual poverty message of hope the kingdom of god is never to reject them 
and the kingdom of God will not reject you if you are spiritually poor. The kingdom of God is not to that's why he said, Blessed are you. The kingdom of God is for you. And just Jesus is not encouraging you and her to remain spiritually delinquent. Encouraging you and I to remain spiritually poor. But he's welcoming you to change. Change. Read John chapter 14, verse 17. We shall be rounding up. We are rounding up. John chapter 14, verse 17. He is a spirit who revealed the truth about God. Mm -hmm. The world cannot receive him. The world cannot receive him. Because it cannot see him. Because the world cannot see or him. Or know him. Or know him. But you know him. But you know him. Because he remains with you. He remains with and you. And he is in you. And he will be in you. Now, Jesus saw that these people were spiritually poor because they were just, you know, the spirit of man can never live in isolation. The spirit of man, from Adam, the spirit of man can never live in isolation. And that's why you will see from Adam, when uh, Adam was made, the spirit of God was always coming to visit them. And it got to a state, God said, my spirit will no more contend with man. Then, it, it, it tells you that man's spirit cannot, can never live in isolation. And man's spirit is always attached to a super spirit. So, it is either your spirit is attached to the spirit of God, or your spirit is attached to devil, or your spirit is attached to demons, or your spirit is attached to ancestral spirit, or your spirit is attached to, to occultic spirit, or your spirit is attached to traditional spirit, right? Or some people, their spirit is attached to the religious spirit. Now, this crowd... Jesus invited them and said, blessed are you because Jesus knew that they were spiritually detached from the Spirit of God. Some of them, they were religiously, you know, attached. Some of them, they had ancestral attachment. Their spirit had ancestral attachment. So, the attitude, what are some spiritual attitudes that will make you blessed? In the kingdom of God. Number one attitude, very quickly, attitude that runs at the appearance of sin. That's the attitude that will make you blessed spiritually. That will make your spirit blessed, run from sin. At the appearance of sin, run. Because the spirit the kingdom of God is holy. And so it won't permit sin. So if you want to live in the attitude of the spirit of the kingdom run from sin. If you are going to be detached from ancestral spirit, you are going to be detached from demonic spirit, you are going to be detached from occultic spirit, traditional spirit. In fact, I was listening in the news during the week. During the week, I think on Tuesday or Wednesday, I was listening in the news. How, you know, the program was about if you are going to be over and the oracle have picked you to be an over, can't you continue with your own religion if you are a Christian and oracle picks you? Can't you remain a Christian and be over? If you are a Muslim, can't you remain a Muslim and be over? And a traditional uh, a traditionalist was invited. He said, no, it is covetousness. <laughs> he said, he said the, the stooge of Hoba is traditional. Mm -hmm. And so if you are a Christian, remain your Christian. If you are a Muslim, remain your Muslim. Because they cannot... The spirit of man can never live in isolation. Those of you that are spiritually poor, you need the spirit of the kingdom. And that's why Jesus said, blessed are you. As you are spiritually poor, as you are coming into this kingdom, the spirit of God will take over. Mm -hmm. Right? So, attitude of sin, run away from it. Those are the attitudes that will not make you to be spiritually poor anymore. Run away from sin, at the appearance of sin. Then the attitude that seek the kingdom first 
and his righteousness before other things, you must cling to it. Cling to it. That attitude that will seek for the kingdom of God. For the Bible says, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all other blessings shall be added. In the kingdom there is blessing. And so develop that attitude. The attitude that will make your spiritual uh, life, you know, to become meaningful. Then the attitude that uh, detaches from false spirit, all of these false spirit that I have mentioned, detach from them. Religious spirit, traditional spirit, occultic spirit, ancestral spirit, demonic spirit, detach from them. Once you detach from them, the only spirit will take over. And you will realize that your spirit will no more be poor. Your spirit will no more be poor. Therefore, Jesus, knowing fully well that the members of the crowd were not void of any of these spirits attached to their spirit, he invited them to the kingdom. And he said, blessed are you, you that you are spiritually poor. Blessed are you. Once you come into this kingdom, then the spirit of God is not poor. Once you have the spirit of the kingdom, then you will no more be spiritually poor. That's why I want to invite you today into the blessedness of the kingdom. We shall continue upper week and we shall look at, you know, this other blessed are you, blessed are you, blessed are you, be attitude. These are the attitudes of the kingdom. The attitude of the kingdom requires that your spirit should not be poor. Your spirit should not be poor materially and spiritually. And that's why I want to invite you into this kingdom. In case you are listening to me and you are not yet a member of the kingdom of God, I want to invite you to join this kingdom. Blessed are you. Your spirituality will be healed. The Lord will detach you from all ancestral spirits that have been troubling your life. They come in your dream. They come when you sleep. They come at work. They come to snatch good things away from you. The Spirit of God, once it takes over, it will detach you from them. Blessed are you when you come into this kingdom. I invite you to the kingdom of the, the, of, of the Most High. The kingdom of our God. The kingdom that heals spirit. I want you to lift up your hands wherever you are and say, Father, heal my spirit. Go ahead and pray. Heal my spirit. Holy Spirit, touch my spirit. Don't let my spirit be in isolation of you. Pray that prayer. Heal my spirit, Lord. Touch my spirit. Holy Spirit, I want to have, I want to enjoy you. Nathaniel Bassi sang his song. He said, Holy Spirit, carry me, oh. Carry me, oh. Holy Spirit, carry me, oh. Carry me with the wings like eagles, carry me, oh, carry me. Oh. Thank you, Father. I see the Spirit of God taking over your spirit. From today, you will no more be spiritually poor in Jesus' name. Amen. From today, you will no more be materially poor in Jesus' name. Amen. As you come into the kingdom of Jehovah, as you come into the kingdom of Jesus, Jesus embrace you in Jesus' name. Amen. The spirit of the living God take you over in Jesus' name. Amen. Your name is written in the book of life. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Your name is recorded in this new kingdom. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. As you translate it into this kingdom, you will no more be poor. Amen. Poverty live your life in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. For in Jesus' name we are prayed. Amen. Amen. Thank you very much. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Let's listen to this announcement. This Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We want to believe that all our viewers across the globe, that you have been blessed again today. God bless you for connecting. Amen. This is the Lost Portion Restorers Ministry, Lagos, Nigeria, West Africa. We want you to continue to connect with us online even as we meet on this platform to worship God together. We also want to announce to you that Friday, 31st of July, is our next Tari night. Yeah. It will be another time to pray to God. Yeah. When we pray to Him, He hears us. Yeah. So it's another time to bring 
our requests before our Father in heaven. So stay connected at 12 midnight where we shall be praying to God together. And in the, in this, um, in the, because of this uh, tarry night, we will want to announce again that uh, our regular weekend tonic is not going to take place this Saturday because of a tarry night. So it will come up upper Saturday. We want you to stick connect. There are many good topics that has been discussed, and I believe that you'll be blessed as you listen to her and uh, connect with us on those uh, with those program. And finally, too, if you want us to pray with us, please dial any of our, the church telephone numbers to pray. reach our pastors, and uh, we are available to pray with you. That's where we are. We want us to pray with you. Please dial the number and we shall be available to pray with you. God bless you. The church account number is there. If you are led to pay your tithe and your offering into the church, please feel free to do so and you shall be blessed in Jesus' name. Mm -hmm. Till I Amen. see you, I am Pastor ZOA or Lade Joe. God bless you. Yeah, as we round up the midweek, uh, the midweek speak to the rock, you no know, still holds and still remain connected to that program. The theme for this starry night is the rewarder. The rewarder. The rewarder is going to visit you. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. And so the flyer shall come in the course of the week. I want to thank you for joining us today. I want to congratulate you also for witnessing. I mean, the close of the month. Hallelujah. This Sunday is the last Sunday of July. And next Sunday is the Judah Sunday. The Judah Sunday is the time we use to praise God. You know, that one month, the first Sunday of, the, of the, every month, praising God is not too much to do. And so join us next week as we shall be praising God together because it's Judah. I see you at the tarry night and I'll see you next week Sunday, Judah. God bless you. I remain your friend, your shepherd, your brother, M.A.C. Olade, your lead pastor, the Lord's portion restaurant. Thank you very much for being with us. God bless you.